starting off with that you know father i thank you i thank you for everything i thank you for strengthening us it is you are how we fight our battles this is how we fight our battles coming together and you know praise is how you fight our battles that is how you do it because god you are capable able and willing to do all things that come against us you will stand in that gap you will do what needs to be done that's why we put everything in your hands because you know how to do it and i just ask father in the name of jesus that you know this message be preached the way you want it to be preached i ask you to guide my words guide my thoughts to bring glory to you how you want this message to go in Jesus' mighty jesus name amen. amen thank you father thank you jesus thank you father you know then that 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 fear fear the act the, the, the uh, actual definition of fear i found a good one online it's an unpleasant feeling triggered by the perception of danger, either real or imagined. So, you know, it doesn't even have to be something, it doesn't even have to be something that you're seeing. It's, it's just the imagination of it. It's just the fear of the thought of it. And that's usually what, you know, we come against. It's the, the fear of the thought that prevents us from doing stuff. You know, fear will hinder. Fear will stop the move of stuff. Fear will stop you from doing what you need to do. It'll stop. It'll stop you in your tracks, cold dead. You know, anyone that hasn't come out on Tuesdays, I highly suggest you do. But that's that's one thing that we've been talking about now. It's when they sent the twelve out to to look at the you know the promised land. They all saw the same thing. They all came back with the same report. Well, they all came back saying the same thing. But there was two that came back with a good report, and the rest of them said, "Oh no, we can't do that." You know, and I always thought it was funny because these, these are the same people before, their entire time before they got there, they saw God moving. They seen the, the yes. sea parted. They seen all this stuff yet, you know, and, that, and that, that's, that's where we're at today. Even though you've seen it before, even though you've seen God move, even though, and they really saw God move, fear came in. And what happened? It prevented them. It hindered them. It stopped them from receiving God's best. Receiving you know, going into that promised land. So that's and that's why I think it is an important subject, and that's why we definitely got to talk about it because fear, like I said, it hinders, it stops, it, it, it stops you in the in the in the in the move of the spirit. It stops everything that God might want to do, because fear is also the seed of doubt. Fear is the seed of unbelief. You know that stuff don't that stuff don't just come for for no reason. There's a fear behind it. You know, like. What we do a lot of times, like say you see somebody that's sick, what does it say in the Word? You're supposed to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Well, you know, maybe they don't believe what I believe. Maybe they don't think about the same thing I think about. Maybe, uh, you know, they're not in the same place that I'm at. Well, you know, uh, uh, if the Lord wants me to pray for them, they'll, they'll lead me over to that. You know, no, 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 no. It told you what to do. You, you don't put, put the fear aside. Right there, you just hindered it. You hindered and stopped God's move right then and there. You know, that's, and that's, that's, that's what it is. It just stops the move of everything. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You know, fear is just faith in reverse. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That's why we, we put our faith in his word. You know, I not see it at that moment, but I know what his word says. That's my evidence. I know what his word says, and it says, what did you say? His word will do what I performed it to do. It shall not return to me void. It won't come back void. Void is what you write on a check. It makes it invalid. It don't work. His, his word won't come back void. You know? That's what that, that's, I always, that's one of my favorite, especially when he said it. I was like, yeah. So let's go. I want to go to uh, Mark 9, 14. Now, as you probably already know this one. This is after... Jesus came down off the Mount of Transfiguration there. They already saw him, you know, clothed in white. They saw all the glory. They saw him on him. And uh, it's, it's in Matthew. It's in Mark. It's in Luke. It's that story where they, he come, as soon as he comes down off the Mount, what's going on? His disciples are down there. They're praying for people. They're, they're laying hands on the sick. They're casting out demons. But there's one boy who comes, and he, even the dad said, I can't. You, I brought him to your disciples, and they can't cast him out. You know, it's one of the only times in here you saw it didn't work for them. So, I like Mark's version because I think it gives a little bit more detail on the matter as opposed to anyone else. So, let's go to Mark, starting 14. It says, When he came to the disciples, he saw a great multitude around them, 
And the, the scribes disputing with them immediately, when they saw him, all the people were greatly amazed, and running to him, greeted him. So Jesus comes down off the mount, he sees what's going on, he sees them over there arguing, he goes, what are you discussing with them? And then the one from the crowd answered and said, teacher, I brought my son, who was a mute spirit, who has a mute spirit, and whenever it seizes him, it throws him down, he foams at the mouth, he gnashes with his teeth, and becomes rigid. So I spoke to your disciples that they should cast it out of him, but they couldn't. And he answered him and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring the boy to me. So then they brought him, and when he, was, and when he saw him immediately, as soon as this thing saw Jesus, the spirit convulsed him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming at the mouth. So he asked the father, How long has this been happening to him? And he said, From childhood. And often he is thrown both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. So this thing's trying to kill the kid by throwing him in the fire, throwing him into the water. Mm -hmm. but, if you can, but if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said to him, if you, can, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Immediately the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. So when Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying, it, saying to it, Death and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him and enter him no more. Then the spirit it cried out, it convulsed him greatly, and came out of him. And he became one as dead. So the kid passed out probably <laughs> after all that. So that many said, He is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand, lifting him up and arose. And when he had come into the house, the disciples asked him privately. So now, the disciples... At this point, you got to remember, Jesus had already given them the power to cast out demons, had already given them the power, and this was after he sent them out two by two. So these guys were doing miracles. These guys had seen it. There, there shouldn't have been any fear, shouldn't have been any doubt. They were doing it. But this one time, they couldn't. That's why they came to me privately. They probably went off in the room and were like, hey, uh, why couldn't we do it? Yeah. What happened? What happened, man? So it, said, it went to him privately. Why could we not cast it out? He said to them, this can only come out nothing by prayer and fasting. Now, if you read that one, it sounds like the only way to get rid of that spirit is, is prayer and fasting. But that's not what he was talking about. He, he actually addressed it at the beginning. Because he said, if you go back to 19, this was he, they, he figured it, he got the word of what the, con what the whole conversation was about. Okay, the guy brought his son, couldn't cast it out of him. So if you can do anything, please do it. So here's how he addressed it. Oh, faithless generation. It was their faith. They didn't believe they could. But the question is, is why couldn't they? Like I said, they had already gone out. Even Judas, who turned on him, was one of the people given, he was probably out there healing people, casting out demons. He was part of the twelve. He was sent out as well. So why could we not do this one in particular? Well, if you look at it, it probably comes down, this is why I like Mark, because I think it gives a little bit more detail in it. It says the first thing that Jesus comes down, if you look over here at the very beginning, at 14, it says, And when he come down, and when he came to the disciples, he saw a great multitude around him, and scribes disputing with them. So automatically, we already know the scribes and the Pharisees, they weren't the biggest fan of Jesus, because they had that religious correctness, as we coined the other day. They didn't, you know, they even, even when Jesus was casting out demons, they tried saying it was by Beelzebub, the king of the demons, you know? So, obviously, they probably saw him go down, and I'm sure they probably jumped right on their backs and were arguing with him. It says right here they were disputing with him. See? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you thought you were going to cast that one out. Well, where's, where's the power you had now? Where's your teacher now? You know, I'm sure they were going all over the place. It doesn't exactly tell you what, but I can only imagine. I can only imagine. So as soon as you got, and that's what we stood up against here, that religious spirit where people were telling you something. That All that is is a seed, a seed of fear, because it sprouts doubt, you know? What does it do? You know, well, tongues aren't for today. Well, you know, a lot of people don't do it. Well, they do sound a little nutty when they do do it, <laughs> you know? And, well, but, you know, A, B, and C are against it, so maybe D is wrong because, you know, three against one... Yes, yeah, so all all it was was a seed of doubt. That's all it was, and the doubt will grow. The fear will grow. It'll keep growing if you can do it, if you allow it. You know. 
And that's why Jesus addressed it right there. He, he, he got, he was like, what are, we, what are we talking about? What are you discussing with them? And that's when they leveled with him. They told him the whole thing. And it even says right here that this thing was, I'm sure they probably saw it. And I mean, I've never seen a person possessed in that, especially like that. I'm sure it would. I'm sure it would have scared half the people here. I'm sure it would have scared a lot of people. The the kid fell down, foaming at the mouth. I'm sure he was convulsing. He was, and it's, it says here that the thing was throwing him left, throwing him right, throwing him into the fire, throwing him into the water. All of a sudden, you got fear. You know, even even in our even in our kingdom, we have you know, we have a chain of command. We have so I'm sure that even the enemy has a chain of command in his thing. I'm sure there's probably lower going up. Maybe they were only dealing with lower ones. This one all of a sudden, you know, hey, this one's got power more than we've dealt with. All of a sudden, fear. Doubt. Even though they knew they could take it on, because they have, greater is he who is in us than he who is in this world. As we said, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what the thing is. It doesn't matter how big the thing is against you. Okay. He can take it out. But he answers it. He said, Why could we? It says, Oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear you? Bring the boy to me. So, how do you address that? That's why we always say faith is, you know, faith is by hearing and hearing of the word of God. That's how you build yourself up in faith. You know, when you have your faith has to be, has to be greater than that fear. But when those fears come, and that doubt comes. What do you What do you do about it? Well, let's take the whole Let's take the healing incident as a, as a, as a as an example. Well, I don't know if I can heal this guy. I don't know. Doesn't matter. You're not. <laughs> You're not. It's God. Greater is He who is in me than He who is in this world. You got to take your. I mean, it's operating through you, but it ain't you. you Ryan is not healing anybody. God is. Ryan might have laid his hands on somebody. But it wasn't me. It was God operating through me. You know that's and when you when you when you distinguish yourself from that, then there shouldn't be any fear because it's in His Word. And what does it say? My word will not return to me void. I always, I use that scripture in everything because it applies to every other scripture. Because if it's written in His Word, if it's written in here, then that means it will not return to Him void. You know, Scripture supports Scripture. Even when you when you preach or when you practice something, back it up with scripture. Yeah. That's why you always hear us when we, someone got a headache or someone's got a toothache or something like that. Okay, well, Father, it says in your word, lay hands on a sick condition. You're reminding him of his word. You're using his word. It's also building yourself up. You're using scripture to support you know what you're doing. Where that comes from, the word will not return to you always. It's Isaiah 55:11. Isaiah 55:11. In fact, let's. Well, I'll go there real quick and I'll read it. Thank you, Father. Thank you. A lot of times, like, a lot of people say faith is by seeing. I think the enemy uses that, too, because he'll show you things and be like, look what I can do, and um, show you, and that's how fear and doubt gets at you. I mean, many times that's happened to me, but the minute I speak the truth or speak the life, it goes away because they're afraid of us. That's why they'll attack you physically, mentally, spiritually, because they know that you are stronger than them. We might not well, that's where, that's, it, but we That's why the enemy that. uses fear because like, what are we just saying? I am who you say that I am. I'm not who you say I am. I'm not who you say I am. I am who he says I am. That's how it gets mixed up because when you start listening to that religious spirit, when you start listening to anything against you, that's all it is, is a fear of doubt. That's all it is. But in, in here, let's let's go to that. I'll start in 10 and I'll work my way down. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven, and do not return there but water the earth, and make it bring forth the bud that it may give seed to the sower and breed and, and bread, uh, yeah, bread to the earth, eater. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Jesus. So right there, it's a, I use that scripture any time I'm doing anything, because it's, I think it's, for me personally, that's just my favorite scripture. It's the perfect umbrella for his entire word. Nothing will return to him void. It will do what he has said it will do, and it will accomplish what he pleases. 
You know, and that's and let's, let, I want to go to Psalm 91 if you got your, your thing. Psalm 91. That's another thing. Because a lot of people, well, you know, we have, that's what we were prophesying over here. You're surrounded by, by mighty men of God in this place. And anything that you do, you know you have where to go. You know you got James to go to. You know you have all these. Starts in starts in five, Psalm ninety-one five. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lies waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. So right there, it's even telling you, it don't matter. Even if you're the only one, even if you're the only one out of the group, a thousand will fall, will fall and drop like flies at your right, and a th ten thousand might fall and drop like flies at your right, but it shall not come near you. As long as you're walking in that faith, and as long as you're walking by faith and not by sight. As long as you're walking in His Word, there should be no fear. It even tells you in there, you shall not be anxious for nothing. You weren't given a spirit of fear. If He, if he promised you something and you weren't able to do it, that would be unjust. Mm -hmm. He tells you to cast down these imaginations. Cast down those thoughts when they come. If you weren't able to do it, that would be an unfair, that'd be an unfair you know, commandment for you to do. It'd be an unfair thing for you to tell you to do. If you weren't, that'd be like t telling me to jump in the middle of the street and stop a van coming. I can't do that. <laughs> that'd be unjust if I tried. <laughs> you know, he wouldn't tell you to do something you can't do. So that must mean we were able to do it. Another example of when this does, let's, let's go to Matthew, Matthew eight twenty three. Matthew eight twenty three. Of course, this is when, when Jesus was walking on the water. This is one of, one of my favorite ones because a lot of people kind of gloss over a very important thing of it. So we'll start in 23. It says, Now, when he got into the boat, his disciples... Oh, I'm sorry. This is the other one. I was going to say... Where's that? Where's that? No, that's where he was falling asleep in the, in the boat. Hold on a second. I lost my place. It's all good. Thank you. Matthew 14, sorry. Matthew 14, 22. Well, he says in Matthew 8, um, 26, um, because they doubted him, the waves were coming out. And he says, why are you fearful, oh, you of little faith? Yeah, right that is there, another one, yeah. Right there, their faith stops them from, they've been with Jesus, and then he's sleeping, and they're like, we're going to die. But, um... Their faith stopped them from doing what they were supposed to do. Yeah, it was either in Mark or Luke, if you read that same exact story, he even says in the beginning, he says, let us pass over to the other side. So he was already declaring what was going to happen. He already, that's why Jesus was asleep. He didn't, he didn't feel the need to have to do anything. He had already prophesied what we were going to do. We're going to cross over to the other side. There was no fear, doubt, or unbelief in that. He already, no matter what comes in the path, we're making it to that other side. He said it. That's what we're doing. But I wanted to go to Mark, uh, Matthew 22 here. This is what this is where he walks on the water, because I and like I said, they, they always gloss over an important part of it. It says immediately Jesus made uh, made the disciples get into the boat. Go ahead, man. Uh, let's go down to 25. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it's, it is I, don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come out onto the water with you. And Jesus, of course, said, come on out. Peter got out of the boat, walked on the water, and came towards him. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Now, I always like that because everyone always glosses over the fact he walked. Peter did. 
He actually took a couple steps, and until you can do that, I don't want, no one should criticize him because he actually took a step out and he started to walk towards him. But what stopped him? When he looked around, he took his eyes off Jesus and he was like, wait a minute. There's storm blowing. There's wind coming. The rain's coming down. What am I doing? <laughs> and what happened when he did that? That's when he started to sink. And of course, in his defense, the first thing he did was he crawled out to the Lord. <laughs> when he was going out, you know, Lord, save me. And that's when Jesus reached his hand out and, and called him. And he said, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Why did you doubt? And that's another thing. He got robbed of God's best. How awesome of a story would it have been if he would have walked out and they're out there dancing on the water together? That would have been awesome. That would have been great. And I always, and whenever I read that, I can almost hear the disappointment in him. Because he, because he's seen it. He's seen him walk and he was like, yeah, come on out to me. He's like, why did you doubt? Why did you doubt? You were in the midst of it. You were in the midst of it. You were doing it. You know, even when something's going your way, right there is an example. How many of us walking on the water, the, the, I'm sorry, but I like to think I was in, if I was in the situation, the last thing on my mind would have been the wind and the rain, but I can't criticize him. I can't, I didn't walk on the water. But I, you, I would have been focusing on that. <laughs> you know, that's why when he started, I mean, as soon as he took his eyes off the prize, it started to go down. And that's why, as I said, you can hear the, the, the disappointment. Why did you tell? Why did you doubt? Jesus, forgive us, Lord. Yes, thank you. The fear robbed Peter of experiencing the best God had for him. Jesus didn't want him to take a few steps and sink. He wanted Peter to come out to him. It says fear can disrupt all things, even obeying God's word. Fear of finances can disrupt tithes and offerings, as we had talked about earlier. Being too busy worrying where the money for ne that next bill is coming from instead of standing in faith on his word. There's a reason that faith is the shield in the armor of God. It's what you pick up and place in front of you. It takes the hits so that you don't get hit or knocked off your feet. When fear comes flying like an arrow in your face, fear is what you throw up and block so that it doesn't hit you. Just as fear can cause doubt, faith is what blocks it and blocks it in its tracks. That's why it's important to build up your faith. And what do we say? Faith comes by hearing and hearing of the Word of God. That's why whenever you're in that situation, we, we stood against anxiety. Find that scripture. It says you shall not be anxious for anything. Mm -hmm. let, me, let me look it up. You shall not be anxious. Well, it even says like, if you have faith like a mustard, a mustard seed, you can move mountains and... It just takes like one person and it's hard to think about that like my faith can do this but once you believe that and accept that for yourself you can do amazing things yeah it's philippians 4 6 and 7 do not be anxious for anything but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving present your requests to god and the peace of god which transcends all understanding will guard your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus right there that one's perfect yeah so when those things come when those things what are you supposed to do you build yourself out present your requests to God hey God this the, you know I'm, I'm feeling it I'm feeling it but you know what I'm leaving it at your feet this is what your word says and this is what I'm gonna stand on I ain't gonna stand on what the world says I'm gonna stand on what the word says because what do we say it I am what you say Mm. I am. Mm -hmm. I ain't what they say mm -hmm. I am. Mm -hmm. And this is how we fight our battles. Mm -hmm. By standing on his mighty word. It says that his word will not return to him void. He says he puts his word before everything. Before anything was, the word was. It is his word that we put above all things else. And the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And I thank you for that, Father. I thank you that we were not given that spirit of fear. We have the opportunity. We have the we have our weapons are not carnal, but mighty Amen. in casting down yeah. those thoughts, right. those imaginations. And like I said earlier, he wouldn't promise you to do something. He wouldn't tell you to do something if you weren't able to do it. And he wouldn't promise you something if he wasn't willing to give it to you. There's the, that would make him an unfair and unjust God. And we know for a fact. He is not.
<laughs> we know that for a fact. So, Father, I just want to thank you. I thank you, Father, for all that you have given us. I thank you for all that you have given me. I thank you for this place. I thank you for these people. I thank you for your holy, mighty, written word. I thank you for the strength that you have given me and everybody here. I thank you for the faith that you build up inside of me each and every day, standing on your word. And I thank you that he who is in me is mightier than he who is in this world. I thank you for the victory. I thank you for making me no longer a slave but a child of the Lord Most High. I thank you for all that you have given me. And I thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Good word. I just want to make a declaration. Yes. I just want to make, it's not a prophecy, it's a declaration. I was taught by the Holy Ghost today. Amen. The Holy Ghost was teaching me while you were teaching. Amen.